Welcome to the Golf Kingdom, and we have an awesome show for you, and it's a special show. It's our 50th show. Yes, the Big 5-0, and if it's the Big 5-0, we gotta celebrate. Let's get some fireworks in here, some explosions, yeah, and, and it can't just be fireworks. It's gotta be, how about some dancing girls? Yeah, some dancing girls, the Big 5-0. It is our 50th show, and we've done some great stuff in the previous 49 to help your game, and no different here on this show. Let's bring in our blueprint and talk about it. We're gonna start off and come to the bottom of the show with two build it segments. Yes, two things we're gonna to do to help you build your game. Dead in the middle of the show, it's big fish. Something big to help your game, something big to see to help you. Then we're gonna to go to the Golf Kingdom Library. Yeah, I'm gonna pull a book out of our Golf Kingdom Library and see what someone wrote about that I'm gonna to bring to you to help your game. Then after that, it's Rob's right. Yeah, one of my players recently said I was right and I'm gonna tell you about what I was right about on the lesson tee. And we're gonna close this big show, as always, with Time to Rise. Are you ready? Cause it's time to build here in our 50th show on the Golf Kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world, the Golf Kingdom. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Okay, so we're gonna start off in the simulator here, and I'm gonna work with you on the transition of your swing. I'm gonna show you what happens when you're over the top, and I'm gonna give you a couple keys to help you not be over the top, get better compression, hit it farther, hit it straighter, and there's a special drill that I use called the triangle drill that'll help you get a feel for this. So if you wanna get up and practice this while I'm showing it to you, you can do that. So if you can understand what a shape of a triangle is, we can do this drill. But let's just first show a bad looking shot. So we got a little simulator set up here. It's a little 70 yard shot. I've got a, a seven iron in my hand, so I'm just gonna show you with a seven iron, if I do this wrong, what is the effect from just simply 70 yards? Not the 170 yards I hit this, but if I'm only trying, if I'm only trying to hit it like 70, 80 yards, and I come back and then come down this way over the top and slide across it, what's gonna happen to the golf ball with this little shot? So here you go, we're gonna see it on the simulator, I'm gonna come back and loop this way and yank across it. So I yank across it and it comes off the club and you can see it kind of going weak into the right. So that ball went off to the right there. You saw it right of the green in that bunker. So that's that little slicey shot that comes off to the right. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get good compression. So we're trying to A, be on top of it and forward like this, but we're trying to be more that inside out feeling you always talk about, you always read about, that you don't want to be hitting the outside of the ball, you want to be on the inside of the ball. So I'm just going to hit a shot. I'm going to take my normal swing, which will have this little transition move right here. I'll come in and compress it, and let's just see where it goes on this little 70 yard shot. So here, in to out, hit it, compressed it really good. See how it's flying, it's flying, and it's going, and it's going, oh my gosh, look at how much the compression was. I hit it into the clubhouse. See the difference between the weak right shot and that one? That one is way over the green in the clubhouse. Now, how do we figure out how to do that? We want to hit more shots like that, don't we? So let's talk about that and figure it out. What I want you to practice is this, and this is where the triangle comes in. Now, I got a seven iron in my hand. That's what I want you to practice with to start with. We're gonna practice little short shots with this, little 70, 80 yard shots, and then keep growing and getting bigger. So I want you to swing back normal to right here. And then, so this is one leg of your triangle. Then if I go sideways, parallel to the ground, that's this leg of the triangle. And then I'm gonna to return to the ball on that leg. So you can see if I go up here and go there and come back here, I'm on the inside of the ball. And as I come in, I'm squaring the face and I should get a nice little compressed draw out of it. So let's see if I can hit one that actually is kind of more on the green. So triangle swing here. Here's what the drill looks like. Here, there, there. Let's see how I hit it. It's flying, it's going right towards the flag in the middle of the green. Gonna go over. Not a bad shot, but you saw it was going right towards the middle of the green. That's what we want. So the triangle drill will definitely help you do this. Watch again. I wanna practice it here, over, through. There we go. Here, over, through. It doesn't have to be a gigantic move, just a little move over there. So kind of an isosceles triangle. So here, over, through right there. Here's the here it is. Boom, boom, boom. Hit it good. Let's see how it's flying. Flying right at the green. Over the green again. Almost into the clubhouse. So practice this. That little triangle drill. 
that will help you a bunch with your over the top move, get compression and get some distance out of this. Well, one of those things I really love is our KISS segment where it's keep it simple. Strano, yeah, the KISS, Mwah. something simple to help your game. And I'm going to talk about what happens when you try to learn something new in your golf swing. And it's something that I see a lot of players do. Most everybody that tries to learn it falls into this bad habit or this bad feeling. And it's something really, really simple that if you understand it will help you make that change you're looking for in your game. Because we're all trying to get better. And as coaches, we're trying to give you the things to help you improve. That's where KISS is going to help you here make the correct movement. So for example, I'm going to talk about maybe your coach told you, I want you to get more hip turn going back which would mean your trail hip here, or this pocket, is getting deeper and more turned in your swing. Maybe your swing, as you go back, it's not moving at all, it's staying here. We look like this from the front view, you're swinging back and this hip isn't turning or getting deep. And your coach says to you, you know what, Timmy? I need you to get more hip turn going back. Now this isn't all skate, everybody get up. I want you to try at least this, because I want you to have the concept of what you're doing. So get off your couch, get up, get up close to the TV here, we're doing this all together. So when you go try to do this, what will happen is I'll say get more hip turn and I want you to get back and turn your belt buckle to me like it's a big Texas State Fair first place belt buckle. What you'll do is this. You will make the start of the movement right there. You'll start the movement, make a little move and go, I did it. No, the start of the movement is not the completion of the movement. You need to keep moving to the entirety of the range of motion that I'm asking for. So the kiss, mwah, simple thing is move the whole time. The start of it is not the finish of it. Get set up, start it and keep it going until we've completed the movement and you do that and you'll find that you make these changes you're looking for in your game. Time for a putting service announcement and I'm kind of in a weird spot, but I'm not ready to reveal it yet. We're going to talk about how do you transition from slow greens to really fast greens. One thing my players are always telling me is they want to play this really great golf course. Not their home course, but a really, really great one they got invited to go play in the greens were PGA Tour, major championship fast, and they had a hard time getting the speed right. They kept hitting it and kept going too far, too far every time. The problem is you're not used to seeing the ball roll a really long way, really slowly, where you can count the turns. I used a little trick as a little kid to figure out how to do that when I was going to faster greens. And the thing I did was I went to my grandparents' basement on their concrete floor and I just putted right to the drain so the ball would roll really, really slow a long way. And I had to learn how to hit the ball lightly in order to do that. So let's demonstrate it here. And I'm actually standing on a conference table. Now I'm ad advocating you get on your kitchen table to do this, but I needed a fast surface here. So up on this table, I got a little green here I'm working in, working with, actually a little football field. So it's probably rolling around eight on the stent meter. So in order for me to make this go in, I gotta hit it pretty hard. See that ball's rolling really fast because I gotta hit it really hard to get it to go over to that, there to that cup. Now the table, if the little green is maybe eight or nine, What's the table on the stint meter? Maybe 16, 17, maybe double? Here's where you practice it on your concrete floor. Get a ball here and now make it roll over there nicely. You don't want it flying into this cup. You want to learn how to make it roll nice and slow over there. Just like that, boom, right in the hole. And you saw it was rolling really good. I didn't whack it and make it fly over there. That's the problem you have on fast greens is you get up there and you hit it like that, it's going too fast. So find a really fast surface. I recommend your garage floor, do it there and you'll find that you hit it better on the greens when you're dealing with fast surfaces. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more pro pointers from me via your Amazon enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day I give you a new tip free with your Amazon enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host Rob Strano, every day.
Okay, it's the big fish segment, and I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's a really big fish. What has that got to do with golf? Well, we made a switch from a golf show to a fishing show. This might be fishing kingdom, but it's our big fish segment, and this is where I take something big, like our big club, and show you something to help your game so you can see it real clearly. So let's get rid of our, our big fish here and get our, our really big club that we're gonna use. So our big fish segment uses our big club because I want it to be easy for you to see what we're talking about it. We're talking chipping here. If you struggle with chipping and you've been practicing that hinge and hold chipping technique, you're gonna have a problem and I see it when players come to me at the academy and they can't chip and they're struggling and they say, I've been practicing hinge and hold and I'm not very good at, at doing that or chipping. Let me explain what hinge and hold is first and then I'll explain you the error. So hinge and hold means as you swing back, you hinge your wrists. So I hinge my wrists and then I come through and I hold that hinge. So it's hinge and hold. So I put the club behind the ball. So watch this, I'll hinge it and now I'll hold it coming through, right? Right here we go, hinge, hold, and I hit the ball, right? Uh-uh, I missed the ball. When you hinge it, the club gets shorter. And when you hinge it and then hold it, the club's short, it's too short to get back down to the ball. To get back down to the ball from hinge and hold, you now have to bend and go down and do this. And that's what leads to those fat shots. So big fish segment, the thing you wanna learn is, Hinge and hold won't work. Number one, the club gets shorter. And number two, this hinging action is speed and power, and I don't want that. You want the club to stand up nice and tall. You don't want any hinging in your chipping action, and you want it's gonna go up and down just like this with quiet hands. Do this, and you'll hit better chip shots and get rid of all the mess ups you have around the green. Oh. Hey gang, hey, welcome to the Golf Kingdom Library. We get all the great golf books here ever written to help your game. And I was over here in row one looking for a specific one and I found it. This one's got some great stuff to help your game. Specifically, I was looking for a quote from Sam Snead. Yeah, one of the legendary golfers. Sam talks about something really specific to help you through impact in this book. So you know what? Let's go and look at what this book has to say to help your game. Well, the book I pulled is the complete book of golf. From 1953 is the copyright. As you can see, it's got some of the greats in golf up there. Ben Hogan, Kerry Middlecoff, Tommy Armour, and of course, I mentioned Sam Snead as the player we want to focus on. One of the guys with the most wins ever on the PJ Tour. Yeah, the slamming Sammy. He's going to help us understand a little something about impact. So we want to go to page 70. Yeah, that's the page we want to focus on right here. Let's bring up page 70. So page 70, we want to focus on that side of the page over there where we have his picture on the bottom. Now there's a specific quote we're going to look at and we're going to look at that picture at the bottom. So let's zoom in on that quote that we've got there and I've underlined it in red. It's on that page. So look at the next image the, on that page. I've underlined it in red. It says the correct swing has the shoulders about parallel to the line of flight with the right shoulder under the left shoulder. So right shoulder under the left shoulder. So when you come into impact, we're trying to get the trail shoulder down and the lead shoulder up. It'll look like this as you come in, this shoulder down, this shoulder up. Remember, the ball's on the ground. So this quote right here talks about what do you do when the ball's on the ground? That's the key is as you come down and you're going to hit it, that quote is very important to help you understand. You have to keep your shoulders tipped and we, what we, you know what we call side bend and impact because the ball's on the ground. So as we're turning, we are bending sideways. And when I do that, the shoulder goes down and the lead shoulder goes up. That's the side bend he's talking about. Now let's go to the picture on the page in the next image. This is really important. He says, note the position of the head and the straight right arm. And you can see I've done a couple of arrows there on that page showing you that tip of the shoulders. You can really see how that trail shoulder, that right shoulder is down there in that picture. Right shoulder down, lead shoulder, left shoulder up. But look at that right arm. Look at how extended it is going forward. That is super important. Go out on Google and Google pictures of tour players hitting the golf ball and you'll see us all extended this way. You won't see these alligator arms. You won't see that chicken wing look. You always see us extended with that shoulder down and that shoulder up. Practice just posing in that position. Kind of stand there and go, okay, what do they look like? 
How do I stand like that? Look down at the ball and go, okay, this is how I have to feel. And then what I want you to do is take little itty bitty short swings and work on getting that position right there. Little itty bitty short swings where you're just getting this spot right here and see if you can practice it that way. Do it with a club, without a club, and do it with a ball. These will be a great way to improve and a tip from a book long forgotten but with full of great stuff. Well, I got nothing to say, but you know what? He does. He's got everything to say. Rob's right. Yeah, that's right. Rob's right. It's our segment where he in a lesson with me said, you know what, Rob? You're right. And I'm right a lot. And I'm going to tell you what I was right about in that lesson with that player. And we're going to talk about putting and putting setup. They were struggling with their setup. And I noticed right away they weren't in what I call the right foot, one foot setup or the correct tilt of their shoulders. Now it's something you do already and you just don't know you do it. It's something tour players do all the time and they don't know they do it and then they screw up their putting after that. Let me show you what I mean by right foot, one foot. So some images here, right foot, one foot setup. And you'll notice lead shoulder up, trail shoulder down and they're hitting short little putts. They're just tapping putts in. Next one, watch the next image. He's leaned on this foot, this foot's off the ground, lean to the right, next picture. So you can see this shoulder up, this shoulder down, this hip in, leaned to the right. Next picture, once again, a great example of right foot, one foot. No weight on that foot. Next one, we got another picture. You can see this little tap in position right here. The cup's here, the ball's there. He's a foot away. He's tapping it in. When you tap it in in this right foot, one foot, foot position, you get your shoulders inclined correctly and this hip comes in. Let me show you what I mean. So back up a little bit. We'll take the camera back so you can see full view of me. When I get set up to tap in a short putt here, this is that right foot, one foot position. Gets my shoulder down and my hip in and I get set up from there and I hold this position. I don't keep right heavy like I'm going to fall over. I get 50-50 on my feet, but I keep hip in, shoulder down. This will help the putter be rising when you come into the ball and you'll get it turning over and rolling correctly. So practice your tap in position and I bet it helps you with your setup when you putt and helps you roll the ball better on the greens. Hey, stay tuned. We got more awesome stuff coming here in the Golf Kingdom. Look, I don't want to get into too much technical detail, but Maverick was made using artificial intelligence. It has completely optimized distance in such a way. It's got these jailbreak bars! Aerodynamic head shape reduces drag, increases speed. Nobel Prize? Maybe. Powerful supercomputer has found a way to so you know about the triaxial carbon crown, right? Anyways, it just hits bombs. It's time for our pop culture segment. Yeah, we use movie lines, catchphrases, all kinds of fun stuff to help your game. And we're going Animal House. If you haven't seen Animal House, it's an oldie a goodie. It's a classic. But if you remember the scene, thank you, sir, may I have another, where they talk about giving swats. Well, we're going to talk about impact conditions and how the correct way to swat the ball or swat somebody is the correct way to hit a golf ball. Let's talk about incorrect first. So I'm going to grab a club here, and we're going to come to the wide view. So wide view. So here's what we're talking about. At impact, if I was going to swat somebody, if I was going to swat someone on the rear end, I would pow just like that. I wouldn't hit them on the rear end like that, and I wouldn't hit them on the rear end with the tip of my fingers. It would be flush with my hand like this. I don't want to get in there with the heel of my hand too much because then I'm dragging that face, and if you're a shanker, you're dragging that heel in there and hitting that dreaded shank off to the right. So thank you, sir, may I have another. Let's demonstrate that. Now, I don't have a paddle, but... I got a little racquetball racket here. So if I had a ball coming in front of me and I hit it like that, or I was giving someone a swat and I hit it like hit them like that, I'm going to hit them with the butt end of the grip right on the rear end here. Bang. That's no good. That's not going to get their attention. Plus, I wouldn't try to hit them and do that. I would never swat someone with the tip of the paddle. I'm going to hit them with this, just like it's a, a, a racket here. Boom there with a the racket. So racket. If my racket's that way, I'm going to hit it off the court this way. If it's like this, I'm going to hit it behind me. I want to hit it straight ahead. So whether it's a swat or a racket shot, I want this squared up like that. One way to practice it, of course, is to get home and just take practice swings while the microwave's running and come down and get your hand like this. 
not like this, not like that. So golf club in your hand. What you want is, you want to come in and impact. Thank you, sir, might have another. Boom, get your hand right there. We don't want to be coming in and get our hand like that. And we certainly don't want to come in and get it like this. So Animal House, thank you, sir, might have another. Practice coming down and giving it a good swat to get more power and hit better shots. You know, I was thinking the other day about the swing analysis. I was thinking, what is something everybody screws up? And you know what everybody screws up? Short iron shots. Yeah, you get these little short irons in your hand, you should be able to hit them straight, high, and solid, and you mess them up. I got to thinking, do I have a really good video of a tour player that hits good short iron shots? And I do. Let's check it out in our swing analysis and talk about Brian Gay, multiple winner on the PGA Tour. I played with him in his very first PGA Tour event, and he's got a great short iron swing, and let's look at some of the keys he can help you with. Here we go, Brian Gay's short iron swing. We're gonna bring it up here, great setup. When he starts back, we're gonna pause it at one spot, so we're gonna pause it right here. Check this out. When he's in this spot, he's got the club head outside his hands. Yeah, his hands haven't been active. His hands haven't taken the club and swung it back behind him like this. No, the club is sitting like this. It's sitting outside of his hands right there. Now, let's go to our next checkpoint. So we're gonna come back a little farther. As we zoom in on that, the club's gonna go up. And what you're gonna see here is he's got a nice, short, tight backswing. Look at where that stopped. It's a short backswing. We're nowhere near parallel. Remember, it's a short iron, it's a short club. We don't need a big giant backswing. Now when he comes down, let's bring the swing down a little bit here. So let's start the video again. So short backswing, he comes down. What you're gonna notice here at this next stop point is he has a nice quiet body action here. The clubs come down back in front of his hands. His hips haven't blown open. He's not driving his hips and swinging his hips and turning as hard as he can. He's nice and calm here as he comes down. And then just watch how nice he goes into the finish here as we run the rest of the video. He goes through to a nice balanced finish. So keys, club stays outside your hands. Short back swing, calm body, and a balanced finish will help you hit your short irons better. Well, with our 50th show being a big show, I gotta have a big finish, and it's a second build it segment. We're gonna build something to help your game, and it's something I see players really struggling with. When they come through the ball, they've got a lot of collapse and impact. They top and thin it, and they collapse, they finish with their hands real close to their face right here, and lots of elbow bend. Common error, I gotta figure out what's something I can tell you to do to fix it. And there's something I tell my players at the academy to do to fix it. And we're going to come to the widescreen so I can show you. Now, it's an analogy I give, and I need a prop to do it. So I sent Max Q to go get a diaper. So Max Q, you go. What, what uh, did you bring me? Just take is it. it. Take it. Is this real? It's Javen's diaper. It's Javen's diaper? You brought me Javen's diaper? This is, I just wanted, to, oh my gosh, this thing's, this thing's loaded. Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. So. Diaper, you want to imagine when you're swinging, oh my gosh, I, I can't even risk smelling this thing. So you've got you to gotta understand when you swing this dirty diaper, you want to swing through and keep it away from your face like that. If you're holding onto it and you're swinging, you don't want to be bringing it in closer to you and collapsing like that. No, get it over there. So you swing back, you come down and extend and keep that diaper away from your face. Check out this picture of Arnold Palmer, full screen. See his hands and arms away from his face. Come back to me. Here's what you see coming through. Keep the diaper away and extend it to keep it away from your face. And you'll get rid of the tops and thins on the golf course. I can't believe he brought me a, a real one. Oh my gosh, it actually didn't smell that bad. Hmm. Oh, look. Huh. Here it is. It is no big deal. I mean, hmm. Oh, not too bad. Hmm. Okay, time to rise. I got something great that's going to help us kind of challenge us, kind of give us something to really strive for on the golf course. And here's the word I want you to think about. Ready? Here it comes right here. That word is redeem. Now, what does redeem mean when it comes to golf, when it comes to competition? Well, I want you to think about it this way, to salvage an otherwise losing effort. Okay, so as a past tour player, 
We respect players that don't have it, that are struggling, and they finish strong no matter what. Jordan Spieth recently said this about Tiger Woods. He said, you know what? He never mails it in. It doesn't matter how he's playing. He's going to fight for the last shot, no matter how he's playing. Same thing as, as a player. We're always fighting for that last shot. We're always trying to rally. One of my best rounds I ever played, I made an eight on the second hole. Yeah, I made an eight, a snowman on the second hole. And then I made four birdies the rest of the day and shot even par. So I rallied. I redeemed that round. I salvaged an otherwise losing effort, losing round. So life, golf, doesn't matter what it is. I always talk about win the morning, win the afternoon, win the evening. Well, if you don't win the morning, you know what? Let's win the afternoon. If we lose the morning and lose the afternoon, let's win the evening. Either way, redeem it, salvage it on the course and off the course. Fight for every minute and every shot. The 50th show, it's come and gone. Let's recap our strand notes right here. We started off with the KISS segment where I talked about the start of the movement is not the finish of it. Start it and keep it going. Then in Rob's right, I talked about putting setup and how important the right foot one foot is in getting the setup right. And then the last of the strand notes is swing analysis. We talked about short irons. It's a short iron, swing it short, stay under control, and you'll hit better shots. Now, be sure you jump out on social media, catch us at all the platforms there. If you have an Alexa device, enable Alexa, the Golf Kingdom skill, and get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. And for everything Golf Kingdom, all the shows, bonus content from me, go out there to your app store, download the Golf Kingdom app, and you'll get more stuff from me every day. Thanks for joining us here in the Golf Kingdom.